Hey everyone, so welcome. We have a video today that I am personally very excited about. I'm going to walk you through what I view as the top 10 ACT prep tips, tricks, and strategies for 2021. We have some ACT English strategies, some ACT math strategies, some ACT science strategies, and ACT reading strategies, plus some big picture strategies that I think will be very helpful for you as well. So I'll walk you right through my top 10. We're going to start with the English tips first, just like you see on the test. We'll move to the math tips, then we'll move to the reading tips, and finally we'll move to the ACT science tips as well. Plus, I'll have a little bonus of a couple big picture ACT test prep tips that I'm going to give you that I think are going to help you no matter what section you're looking at. But this is going to be, in my mind, the most efficient way to boost your ACT score. These top 10 tips are going to be what you need to make that happen. So I will see you here with our first tip in just a moment. So welcome to tip number one. This is a quick one, but it's really helpful. It is the difference between semicolons and periods on the ACT. At the end of the day, the ACT English section does not care about the difference between semicolons and periods. So if you see two in a sentence and they look exactly the same, you know that neither of them can be right. It's just like looking at a math section and they say choose the best answer and if they had the answer five twice, you know neither of those could be right because you have to choose only one correct one. So if you see a period and a semicolon like this, I'll show you a little example here, you know that neither of them are right because the ACT English section thinks of these as just two things that will join independent clauses. So if you see two, you know neither of them are right, unless, of course, there's other stuff going on in the sentence. But if nothing else is going on, neither of those can be right. You can eliminate both of them, and it will send you on your way here to have um, a much better chance of getting that question right. And with that, we are headed to tip number two, also an ACT English tip, and this has to do with the word though. The ACT loves to put the word though in the middle of sentences, and they also love to have a comma before the word though and a comma after the word though. I see this question appear on almost every ACT test, so if you see the word though, and maybe an option to put a comma after, before, maybe no commas. Just know, like in this in this question right here, this example question, you're going to need a comma before the word though and a comma right after. It's easy to remember. If you remember this, you'll never get it wrong. You'll get that extra question right every time. No problems. So for our last ACT English tip here, number three, we have got this idea of colons. Teachers love to say that colons are what we use before lists, but that is not the case. And to make matters even worse, the ACT knows that's not the case, but they know the teachers are going to say that all the time. So if you see a list, don't automatically use a colon before the list. A colon needs to have an independent clause before it as well. Now, if colons are confusing to you, watch our colons video. I can probably spend about 10 minutes explaining it to you, and then you'll know everything. You'll know exactly how it works, but for the sake of keeping this video moving, I don't want to do that here. And we're back here with number four. This is an ACT math tip. So. The ACT likes to give you a lot of questions like this one where they say, solve the system of equations, right? Solve these systems of equations. And the thing is, you can do this by hand, but if it's tricky, you can also use your calculator. You can go into your TI calculator and say y equals and put the first equation and then y equals and put the second equation and then go to second calc solve 
and you can solve the systems of equations like that. So again, you can just put one in the y equals, the other in the y equals, and use your calculator's solve function to do that. Now, if you want a bunch more tips with calculators, again, this is another one of those things I could make endless videos on that because the calculator is so useful for the ACT math section. But for now, this is my quick little mini calculator tip for this math section. So let me know, hopefully that's helpful. And we are back with tip number five, and this is a math tip, an ACT math tip that I know is helpful to tons of students. I see students getting confused on this all the time. So that is to be super, super aware of the difference between ratios, fractions, and percents. And that might sound easy and uh, not something that you need to necessarily pay attention to, but it's trickier than you think at times. Remember that ratios are part versus a part. We're comparing a part to a part. So for example, if we saw a little pie chart question here, and they put these all the time on the math section, and we have 40 people out of 100 ski, that means, right, 60 people don't ski. So the ratio representation of this would be 40 to 60. Now, a fraction would be 40 over 100, or a percent would be 40%. Pay attention to what they want, because you know they're going to ask you this, and they're going to say, what is the ratio representation of this? And if you say 40 out of 100, not 40 out of 40 versus 60, you're going to get the question wrong. And of course, it's multiple choice, so you know they're going to put in those sneaky little wrong answers to trick you. And we're moving to tip number six here, which is an ACT reading section tip. And my tip here for this is to think about all of your reading passages as their own little units. And there's a reason for that that gets to how difficult the questions are throughout this section, how they distribute those. And that again is its whole own video, and you can see a link to that below. But the short technique that I would give you is know that on a reading section, you are going to always have four passages and 35 minutes, which means overall, for each passage, you get eight minutes and 45 seconds. So what that means is think of a passage as its own unit. You've got eight minutes and 45 seconds to do that. After you've used up that time, it's time to move on to another passage. And a really great way to practice this is take practice ACTs. If you need practice AT ACTs, I've got a bunch linked here for you. But take those practices and just go ahead and do one passage at a time. Set yourself up with your timer for 8 minutes and 45 seconds and see that you can do a whole passage in that amount of time. And if you can, that's great. If you're not there yet, keep working on it. And now to our seventh tip here, an ACT science tip. And this is to reduce distraction in your passages. The ACT science questions will often say, look at figure number one, or look at figure number two, something like that. And the reality is that if they say, look at figure number two, all you need to do is look at figure number two. You don't need to look at one, you don't need to look at three. Moreover, they're going to put traps in those questions, hoping that you will look at figure one or figure three when you're supposed to be looking at figure two. So what I like to often do with my scratch sheet of paper or even my hands or whatever is when I say, when I read something that says, look at figure number two, I will cover up everything else just as a way, as a little mini reminder to myself that there is only one chart on this question that I need to be looking at. So my mind doesn't wander over, my eyes don't wander over and maybe look at some other passages. That's at some other, um, uh, not necessarily passages, but at some other graphs or maybe some other little, little chunks of text that could confuse me. 
And we are to number eight here, our last ACT science tip for this video. And that is to look at the keys on your charts before you look at anything else in the passage. These keys oftentimes will tell you big picture what you need to be thinking about, what you need to be caring about. So for example, let's look at this little passage here. We see that our key gives us urban site, rural site, one and rural site two. So right off the bat, before I've read anything, I know that I'm likely going to be comparing urban areas to rural areas to other rural areas. And if I keep that in mind, it'll lead me in my thinking, in my reading, and in my analysis of these charts in a way that keeps me directed to the variables that are most important here for us. And now we're moving to tip number nine. This tip is not as much a specific tip for any specific ACT section. It is a tip that is really useful, big picture to your ACT prep as a whole. And that is to bring food into your test, specifically low glycemic food. Low glycemic food is food that will not spike your blood sugar super quick. And that is so helpful because our brains need lots and lots and lots of calories to function well. And if you start running out of energy on your test, and I see this happen to students all the time, and it's a huge bummer because they've prepared really well and they know the content really well, but they start running out of steam. So bring some sort of low glycemic food in and eat it during breaks. Get out, eat it, whatever you need. Just get out during your breaks and eat some of that food. Now, if you want tips on what good low glycemic foods to eat for test prep, check that out. I'm going to link a article and I'm going to actually make a video for it soon as well. And welcome to tip number 10, my personal favorite tip because it was so helpful to me as I prepared for a lot of high intensity and fairly stressful tests. And this tip is to practice mindfulness. So mindfulness is a really good brain training technique that we can use to reduce things like test anxiety. And this is so important because I know so many very bright, well-prepared students who get into a test and feel anxious and that anxiety gives them brain fog. It makes them feel distracted, a little dissociated, whatever. All of these unpleasant things that make it hard to demonstrate everything that you know on a test. So if you want to start learning how to work skillfully with emotions, practice some mindfulness. And the best way to do that is with our mindfulness-based ACT prep course, which is linked here. But if you want to know some other great tips and mini mindfulness exercises, check out all of our other videos in our mindfulness channel or mindfulness playlist here. So just check that out. See what you think. Start practicing. It's super easy. 10 minutes a day and you're going to start noticing a lot of that stress and anxiety melt away. So those were our top 10 tips for the ACT. I hope that's super useful. Again, check out our full ACT prep course. It's mindfulness based. So you're going to get that mindfulness in there and it's going to have all of the sections of the ACT, the ACT English section, the ACT math section, the ACT reading section, and the ACT science section covered. We've got official practice tests in there, everything you could need. Check that out. I hope that's useful to you. And lastly, of course, if you've liked this video, please do like and subscribe because then more people get to see it and I'll know that you liked it and I'll make more videos like this, which is hopefully helpful to you. But I will see all of you in our next video. Bye.